I can't express how happy I am in my heart to see so many of my people, you know, um, we're not going to let this virus stop us from connecting. We're going to connect. And Abby said earlier, and I don't know if everybody heard this, but we've got more of these in store um, as time passes. So we're going to continue to try to get together in this capacity. Uh, we might also use it as some some group chats and surveys of, you know, you know things coming up down the road, maybe dates for camp uh, when we start to figure some things out a little bit more. But I guess um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So what I want to lead with is, is the Challenger program. And the reason why I want to lead with the Challenger program is because we're in challenging times. And um, I guess I want to start by giving a, a big shout out to, to Tony Collins, who was kind of our first lead Challenger person. And I, that torch has been passed quite a bit. And this past staff training, I, we were really fortunate to sit down with Stephanie McGuire. And she did some amazing reengineering of the program. So the program is going to look a lot like what some of you have seen in the past, but there's going to be some changes for that. So before I share my story, I want to, I want to challenge you. I want you to consider the different beads, the different bandanas, the, the, the different um, colors associated with some of the things that you can work on. And so at home, some of you could be working on the red color, which, you know, stands for caring, or you could be working on blue, which is honesty. You could be working on respect, which is yellow. You could also be working on green, which is responsibility. Some of you might be choosing to work on the faith bead, which is white, or the joy, which is purple. And then those are basically the staples that we've had for the past 21 years of camp. And Stephanie added three others that I thought were, were excellent, apropos. Now you can also work on orange, which is self-acceptance. You can work on confidence, which is hot pink. Or you could work on mental health, which is lime green. And embedded in the Challenger story <clears throat> is one of my favorite stories. It's a story that I maybe have shared at Campfire maybe once, maybe twice. The reason why I usually stay away from it, it's kind of sacred ground just to leave it within the Challenger program. But I think, it, again, it's apropos to, to, to be able to share this story with you here today. Those of you that normally hear me tell stories, I'm very demonstrative and I kind of move around. But this format, if I want to maintain the fireplace, um, or not make you motion sick, it's just a process. I'll probably just stay in, in one place throughout the process. But um, this is a story that's that's been around for years and years and years, and it's the starfish story. I think most stories are best told in the first person. So I'm gonna kind of give you my spin on it um, in first person. So <clears throat> if you imagine with me many years ago, a much younger version, fewer wrinkles, no facial hair. Um, back when I was 15 in the year 1985. And one of my favorite things to do with my family is that on spring break, we would go down to Florida and we would drive down. It took us 16, 17, 18 hours. So we would usually break it up into a couple days. But some of my favorite memories during that time were just riding down with them and sharing stories, just the excitement of spending time with family. Um, seafood, in Florida, this is, is one of my favorite things, is when I was truly introduced for seafood. See, growing up in my family, seafood was Mrs. Paul's fish sticks. And so I thought seafood all was terrible. Um, and my family, Chinese, was I think Lechoy Chow Mein. That, that's what I experienced as far as ethnicity, as far as Chinese food. And, and Mexican food, of course, was uh, Ortego taco shells with uh, ground beef and, and all the fixings to go with that as well. But down in Florida, I, I had the chance to, to try fish crab legs and just all shrimp, all kinds of things that I'd never had before. So getting down to Florida was very exciting. Now, we would stay right on Daytona Beach. Um, we'd have the opportunity, we'd stay in a place, a Hampton Inn, we would get there and there'd be warm cookies when we first got there. That was pretty exciting. But uh, there's something about the beach, just something about taking off your shoes, just feeling it in between, just kind of squishing your toes in the sand, what that felt like. Um, just feeling that the breeze blow on you because there's always just a nice little breeze by the ocean, just the smell. Um, it's hard to describe ocean smell, you know, if you haven't smelt it before, but it's very unique in real, many regards. And so we drove down and we broke it up, like I said, into a couple of days. And finally, when we got down, there was roughly about seven o'clock in the evening on our normal protocol. When we got there as families, we would get out, we'd go and we'd check into the hotel. Um, we kind of get settled in and then maybe we'd get an opportunity to go down to the pool or the beach or something else. Well, my mom and my dad, knowing that us kids were really anxious, we were so excited to be able to get there, rolling up that late, said, you know what, you guys just go. 
you just go and get down there. Um, your mom and I all kind of take care of checking in. And so my sister and I, Mary, we sprinted, you know, it was kind of a race to see who got there first. You know, she's a little older than I am. She's a little ahead of me. And then, you know, I call her name, she turns around and I pass her and we're going back and forth to get down to the beach. And finally we get down to the beach. Now on this particular day down in Florida, there was, there was a storm that occurred not that long ago. And everywhere you looked among the beach, there were jellyfish and there were starfish. They'd been washed ashore just because the tide was so strong. Jellyfish is as far as you could see, starfish as far as you could see. Now I've known and I've been told you gotta be careful with, with jellyfish. You wanna be real careful not to touch them because they kind of sting. You know, and if you've ever watched SpongeBob before, you know how that works. When he goes jellyfishing, he tries not to touch the jellyfish. He doesn't want to get stung. So we were stepping around the jellyfish, being as cautious as we can. <clears throat> and there in the distance, I, I could see an older man and he was picking something up and throwing it into the water. So we didn't want to venture too far away from the hotel because we didn't want to make our moms, mom and dad nervous. But um, we, we kind of crept on down and and there he was, just slowly, gingerly. And when he bent over, it was kind of a slow bend, almost like that sympathetic, apathetic, parapathetic man on roller skates, you know, with the one hand, very slowly bending on down. Ooh, he lean right back up. And he'd have a starfish just laid out in the palm of his hand. And before he threw it, he'd just kind of study it. And he'd look at it. He'd look at the five radial digits on the starfish, almost like the five fingers on your hand. And He'd study it and he'd whisper something and then he just threw it right back into the water. And it was befuddling because not only was he very slow and methodical with each one, he didn't do it right away. It wasn't like a, a race where he had to do as many as he could, as fast as he could. He was very slow with the process. He'd bend down again. Ooh, oh. He'd pick one up gingerly in his hand and he'd look at that starfish and he'd whisper whisper something to the starfish and then he'd take it. He'd take it and he'd just gingerly toss it out in the water once again. So Mary and I, we just watched him. We were just watching him for, for several minutes. Just really something we'd never seen before. Matter of fact, just even seeing starfish just to begin with was pretty fascinating in of itself because we'd been in the sand, we'd seen the water, but we'd not seen like marine wildlife right there on the beach very often. So finally, Mary was a little more courageous. She was older than I was, about a year and a half older, a little bolder. She, she went up to him and she said, sir, what exactly are you doing? Did you work here at the beach? And he, he turned over and kind of looked at her, studied her for a second. He said, are you, you from around here, young lady? She said, no, no, my brother and I were from Indiana. Um, we just got down to Florida. We were excited. We came down to the beach and and we, just, we saw all these jellyfish, all these starfish. She goes, yep, 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 there's a big storm, just a terrible storm. And as you can see, as far as the eyes can wander, left or right, jellyfish and starfish, as far as you can see. She said, well, um, what, what exactly are you doing? He goes, well, I'm throwing them back into the water, you see. You see, that these, these animals were not meant to be on the sand. They were not meant to be on the shore. They're meant to be in that water. That's where they live. That's their home. That's where they belong. So I'm just helping them out helping them get back home. She said, well, that's, that's amazing. That, that, that's incredible. Um, but there's just so many of them out here. I mean, there's as many starfish as it seems like since there's stars in the sky. Um, you, you'll never do that. You'll never be able to get through it. You know, why, why, why make the effort to be able to do that? And he bent down again, just took, turned away from us and bent down. Ooh, ooh. Got that starfish and just put it up his hand. He said, I'm going to make a difference to you. Go back to your family. And he took that starfish and he gingerly tossed it into the water. And this time we watched it as it went through the air and kind of floated. When it hit the water, it slowly sunk on down amongst the waves. And I like to think it wasn't just an optical illusion at that time, but almost looked like, if you looked really carefully, like that starfish didn't just land in the water, but it was somehow reconnected with its family once again, because they were waiting. They were waiting for him to come home once again, to get back in the water and to be where it should be, to be back home again. So Mary and I marveled upon that. 
And by this time, my, my parents, Mr. and Mrs. Koopman, Jack and Margaret came on down and they looked at us and we looked at them and they said, it'd be a shame if this man was doing it all by himself. We should really help him out. Start picking up starfish and throwing them back in the water because we can make a difference to that one. That's what we did for the rest of the evening until the stars came out in the sky and the moon was high above. And all you could really see was just right below your feet. You feel the sand in your toes and feel the cool air from the ocean breeze. And by this time, since we couldn't see where we were tossing them, we would just walk down and just wade our feet into the water as the waves just kind of lapped up right over your ankle, kind of making just some of the leg, the hair on your leg a little bit wet. And we aspire to make a difference to each every one that we possibly could. So now with this story, with most stories, I, I think the moral's pretty obvious. You know, how do we make a difference to that one? You know, when I sent out kind of that update about camp, I know it broke and hurt a lot of your hearts, just like it did me. But we can continue to make a difference to others in our life until we're back home again. You know, home is camp. Home is where the heart is. And making a difference can happen daily. Matter of fact, as soon as I sent that email on out, even prior to that, I got text messages from some of you, some of my favorite people on the planet. Um, got a really sweet one from Taylor today. Um, I've been getting a lot of responses where people are relieved. You know, as much as they want to be back home with all of us at camp, that um, they, they feel happy that th that decision was made. It takes a lot of pressure off of them as well. And so that's the starfish story and kind of coming back once again to Challenger. And I'm going to read these colors again. This is something that you can think about and you can work on. And one thing we might consider, you know, I'll talk to Stephanie and we'll talk to Abby and some other folks too, is that if you pick one of these challenges during the week camp, if you let us know what that is, we'll try to find a medium in which you can communicate that. We'll send you your bead. You know, we'll send you your stuff. We'll maybe even try to partner you up with a mentor, somebody that you can communicate with as you work on this particular challenge. So once again, you could choose the red color, which is caring. You could work on your honesty, which is blue. And I'll tell you what, you could even work on more than one of them because all of these things I'm thinking, I could always work on caring and honesty more and respect, which is yellow. You could work on being more responsible, which is the wonderful green color. You could work on your faith, which is white or try to be more joyous, which is purple. You can work on self-acceptance, which is orange. You could work on being more confident, which is hot pink. And lastly, you can also work on your mental health, which is lime green. You might be wondering, what do they want me to say? What am I supposed to be saying in this time? And so obviously, if, if you have something to say that's off this topic, you know, I, I wanna give you that opportunity too, but I'm gonna kinda narrow the spectrum. I'm gonna narrow it on down a little bit to what I'd love you to be able to do is maybe share something about the relationship development, something about the people at camp, okay? And I've said this for years, the magic of camp is, there's many layers of that proverbial onion. Like you could think of an activity that you love. Yeah, the food could be pretty good, especially if it's your favorite meal on a particular day. You know, the, the cabins could be really cool, um, well-maintained. Uh, but it's the people, that's the secret sauce, it's the culture, it's that, that relationship development, it's, it's the people that connect with one another that make it special. So I'd love you to be able to share your version of the starfish story. If you were the starfish on the beach and someone at some point in time at camp picked you up and gingerly tossed you, which gingerly is in a careful or cautious manner, as per Ron Lips in the chat, um, or vice versa, if you felt like there was a point in time when someone needed you to be like that older man going up and picking up and, and you were the starfish. Um, so if you could share who, who, could, who you've connected with, who's made a difference to you or who you've made a difference to in some capacity, that would be wonderful. Well, let's, um, I, I know that there, there's probably more and, and you know, and my hope is that after watching, you know, this video and if you watch it again, the, the, there's lots of starfish story moments and there'll be a lots to, to come forward. You know, we're, we're just, we just started our journey to make memories, right? We got a lot more to make before um, uh, our camp experiences are done. 
but uh, we'll, we'll sing a virtual version of the um, <clears throat> the um, friendship song. About, before we do that, just I have a couple of announcements okay. real quick. Yeah, um, so the the first one is just like you've kind of heard us say that we are recording that. I meant to say that at the very beginning so that you guys all knew. So if um, if you have an issue with us, you know, posting this um, publicly, then um, please just let me know. Um, but our plan is to kind of, as we do more and more of these, to um, just start up. I've got a, a page on our website all ready to go to collect them all, and we'll just share them out everywhere um, so that we can kind of keep connecting with each other, even if it's reruns, too. Um, and so um, to that, also, we're going to be doing a lot more of these. And so, um, Taylor, maybe I'll go ahead and, and plug yours, because yours we've got one on the calendar already. Um, I think we're going to maybe try to do it on Sunday afternoons at, at 4 o'clock, have uh, some camper, so this be like a, a camper um, event program, uh, just tea time with Taylor. So um, I'll have some more information out about that. So Sunday at 4 o'clock, um, if campers and, and some staff want to want to gather just for an informal kind of kind of social time um, to connect. So be looking out for more of that. I know that we've got, um, you know, Troy has said that he's willing to, to do some stuff with his, with his bees. Um, we've got, I know Susie's talked about doing some kind of arts and craft type, type of stuff. Uh, um, Laura's going to do some arts and craft type stuff. Um, we've, you know, I'm still kind of reaching out to people. We've got a lot of ideas. And so um, I think that We'll have plenty of opportunities to connect. We're also going to do some parent cafes. So for the families and parents, um, some of them might be kind of informal. Some of them might have a topic. Um, maybe try to do some um, discussion groups as well. And um, maybe even have like a, a story time a lot of nights, you know, how, we'll get some staff to come and, and read a bedtime story and we'll record those. And so you can come back to them and, and, and see that too. So um, we've got a lot of stuff in the works, a lot of ideas. Um, if there's something that you would like to see, um, just send me an email, send me a Facebook message so that we can maybe see what we can do. But we're going to really work to try to stay connected um, during this time till we can reach out and touch each other again. So um, Stay tuned and um, looking forward to all of that. And finally, too, um, I know we're not having camp at the end of May, but still go ahead and sign up. If you were planning on coming, if you think that you'll come later in the summer, um, go ahead and sign up for camp so we can still kind of get that stuff rolling so that when it's when it's time, when we're able to reschedule, then then we can just hit the ground running with that and, and, and see you then. So we'll keep you posted about events in June and July because we're hoping that things will be you know better by then but but again we just we don't know what's what's going to happen so stay tuned very good any other announcements for the good of the group and i'm going to unmute everybody here so we can yeah. all sing the, the friendship song unless one one last look if someone's got a an announcement that they want without everybody talking i'm going to date myself once again the, the, the grids look a little bit like the brady bunch where everybody's in the panel so i want you to reach over to the person to your left <laughs> And the person to your right, that's right, you have to virtually hold their hands, okay? And we're going to sing this on through. If you don't know the words, that's okay. You're going to get it. You're going to follow along, and you just you just enjoy yourself through the process. Ready? All right. You're about to be unmuted. Here we go. <laughs> what? All right, everybody. Hey, man. I uh... remember you. I you. you. I <laughs> Another <laughs> 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 Love you, people. Have a good night. Stay tuned. Be looking for more info. Guys, love you. Bye, Mr. Coop.
Bye. 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 Everybody. Bye. 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 All right. I think I'm going to end the meeting. So we'll see you guys soon. We'll, we'll get connected soon. Bye. Bye.